Hi there, this is video number three in the derivation of the differential equations for a double pendulum. Now, in the last video, we derived these two second order coupled differential equations, okay? So, quite long and it was quite an involved derivation, okay? But we're left with the, this here, okay? I won't read it out, okay? You've seen it in the previous video. I've just rewritten it um, so that whenever we go to do the rest of the stuff that's sitting there for us. So, these are second order differential equations. We've got theta double dot, okay? And they're coupled because uh, they've got theta one and theta two are in both of these equations, okay? Now we want to simplify this, and what we can do is we can uh, adjust this or change it so that rather than having uh, two second order differential equations, we can change this into um, four first order differential equations okay so we're going to do that now now what we can do is because we're talking about um, angular uh, frequency here we really don't want to be using the ang the, uh, the value theta okay so we're assuming we're working in in radians so we really want to look at the um, theta um, theta derivative we want theta derive derivative which is the angular um, frequency uh, omega, okay? So we call that omega one, and we want in the again the angular frequency two. We'll define that as omega two. So and we'll look at theta one minus theta two, and we'll call that delta um, theta okay and we know that um, this omega is the angular frequency in radians per second so it's 2 pi f okay so let's get in and um, another thing to um, note here let's have a look and see yeah no I, 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 another thing to note here is that if you, this l1 there's L1 in here, there's an L1 in this one, there's an L1 here, there's an L1 there, okay? So there's an L1 in all of these, okay? And they're all equal to zero, so we can cancel out that L1 from each of these terms here, okay? I never did that in the previous one, but we, we can go ahead and we can do that, okay? So um, given that's the case, what we're going to end up with is um, when we employ this into this equation, well, these are two equations. We're going to end up with our m1 plus m2, and we're going to be just have one l1 left, okay? Because it's squared, so we can cancel out one of them, um, and we're going to have now it's theta double dot. So theta dot is uh, omega, which is the angular frequency, but we're actually looking at theta double dot, so it's going to be omega dot okay so that's how we're able to get it into the form of a um, first order differential equation as opposed to a second order differential equation okay so it's that there plus our m2 l2 omega 2 dot again because this is a double dot there that's uh, cos of now it's going to be our uh, delta theta plus our m2 l2 and it's going to be just our um, omega 2 squared okay um, and it's going to be our sine of delta Theta and it's omega 2 squared because it's theta 2 and it's squared, so okay, so theta dot is equal to omega, so that's omega 2 squared, okay. And the final term is going to be plus m1 plus m2 times g sine of uh, theta 1. Uh, equals zero okay so we can just we'll just call that one okay so that's a 
one equation there. And we can do the same with the second equation. I'll, I'll quickly write that down because it follows the same routine. So we're going to have M2, L2, omega 2 dot, plus M2, L1, omega 1 dot, cos delta theta minus m2 l1 omega 1 squared sine of delta theta plus m2 g sine theta 2 equals 0 Okay, so we'll call that equation number two. Okay. So these are the two equations of motion. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to get them in terms of um, the angular frequency. Okay. Um, omega one and omega two. So we want to be able to separate those out okay now um, in order to do that we can look we can simplify it a bit now we'll give some um, we'll give names to some of the um, the quantities here so if we say uh, we want we could say that um, a is going to equal the m1 plus m2 L1, okay, and we can say that let B equal M2 L2 cos delta theta, and we can let uh, E equal the minus M2 L2 omega 2 squared sine delta delta I'll put the delta and sine delta theta sine delta theta minus the m1 plus m2 g sine theta 1 and we'll let c equal m2 l1 cos delta theta and we'll let d equal m2 l2 and we can let f equal the M2 L1 omega 1 squared sine delta theta minus M2 G sine theta 2. Now by doing that we can start to see the wood for the trees okay and we can create a simultaneous equation and we can use the simultaneous equation in order to solve for the uh, omega 1 dot and omega 2 dot okay um, so let's have a wee look and we can do that now so what we're going to end up with is um, the first term here is a so we're going to have a times omega 1 so we're going to end up with our a times omega 1 dot and we're going to end up with the second one here we're going to equal to her we're going to have our b times our omega 2 dot 
And if we say that there equals this term here, which is E, so we're taking the rest of it across, okay? So the rest of it's been taken across to the other side of the um, the equal sign, okay? And then we can say, the next one down, we can say that if we take C, which is this here, we can see times omega 1 dot plus d times omega 2 dot and again we take the rest of this across the other end of the equation here and we get our value of f okay so that allows us to separate out our um, omega 1 dots okay from the value um, omega 1 and omega 2 which is on the other side now what we want to do is we want to solve this for omega 1 and omega 2 now i'll solve one of them okay um, and then i'll just write down what the other one is okay because you can see the other one so what we'll do is simultaneous equations so i'll write this in terms of um, omega 2 so we can say that our um, omega 2 dot is going to equal well it's going to be f minus c omega 1 dot upon d and then we can take this and we put this omega 2 back in up here okay and then we can solve for it okay so we're going to end up with uh, the top line and again would be a omega 1 dot plus well it's going to be uh, b times uh, and it would be our, this thing here f minus c omega 1 dot upon d okay uh, and that equals our value of e so we're going to end up with um, a omega 1 dot plus uh, bf upon uh, d okay so bf upon d the first part of that minus b c omega 1 dot upon d is going to equal our value of e so just open this um, equation up a bit okay so you're going to end up there then with our a omega 1 dot minus b c omega 1 dot upon d plus bf upon d equals e and that's going to simplify to omega 1 dot a minus b c upon d equals well over the other side it's going to be e minus uh, b f upon d and finally coming down here we're going to have our omega 1 dot equals well it's going to be e minus bf upon d upon a minus bc upon d which equals e d minus bf upon d all upon a d minus bc all upon d which is going to equal that's what's that uh, e d minus bf upon d times d upon that's um a d minus b c okay so in the end finally we're going to have our omega 1 dot equals well it's going to be ed 
minus BF upon AD minus BC. Okay. So that's one of them. Now I'm not going to go bother to do another one because it's just it's just bulk algebra. Okay. So you end up with when you work through all the rest of the other one, you end up with omega two dot and you can do this by yourself to convince yourself equals A times F minus C times E all upon A D minus B C. Okay. So we're getting near the end here now. We've got our um, omega one dot, it's angular acceleration um, down worked out. Okay, so our final equations which we're going to put into MATLAB are going to look like well omega one equals theta one dot omega two equals theta two dot we have our a omega one dot plus b omega two dot equals e and c omega one dot plus d omega two dot equals f so that's equation one two three four and we also have our omega one dot equals af minus ce upon ad minus bc okay so we can say that that is number five and we're also going to have uh, omega two dot equals ed minus bf upon ad minus bc so that's number six and we've got all of these uh, equations what we wrote, which we wrote up earlier now um, i don't really intend to write them again so we know that the a b c d e and f are these here so a b c d e and f so we've got these here okay i won't write them out again this takes a bit of time so we've got these here okay and we've got these equations here one two three four five and six so we've got all of those equations and all of those equations can be put into MATLAB and we can model the movement of a double pendulum now we're going to look at the MATLAB code that does that and we'll program it into MATLAB and we'll see the double pendulum working we'll see um, other information that we can pick up from it okay thanks for listening goodbye